Okay, so in this tutorial we're going to quickly go through two worked examples to do with empirical and molecular formula, which are slightly different to each other. Um, uh, the, all of the information you need to know is down in the uh, description box, so the questions are written out in full, so what I'd recommend you do is maybe go check those out first, um, have a go at them, and then come back to the worked examples and see how you did. Um, so we're going to go through the same step-by-step -step process for both of them, even though they're quite different questions. So um, the first one tells us then that we've got phosphorus being burnt completely in oxygen to give an oxide. And it wants to, first of all, it wants us to find out what is the empirical formula of the oxide and then what the molecular formula of the oxide is, given that one mole of the oxide weighs 284 grams. So that, that bit's important for working out the molecular formula a little bit later on. So let's find out, first of all, what we've got and what it is we're trying to find out. So we are told that we've got 1.24 grams of phosphorus reacting with oxygen to give uh, 2.84 grams of the oxide. Now, in order to work at the empirical mass, obviously, or the empirical formula, sorry, we need to find out what mass of oxygen we've used. But due to the, the law of conservation of mass, if we've got 2.84 grams of product and 1.24 grams of that is phosphorus, then the remaining must be oxygen. So in this case, then, we can work out that we have 1.6 grams of oxygen. Now, now that we know that, we can go through our simple way of working out um, empirical formula using this table. So the mass, first of all, we've got 1.24 grams of phosphorus reacting with 1.6 grams of oxygen. The next step is to do the mass divided by the relative atomic mass. So it'll be 1.24 divided by um, the relative atomic mass of phosphorus, which is 31. We're told that in the question, 31.0. Um, we've got 1.6 grams divided by 16.0 because that's the relative atomic mass of oxygen. When we do that, we get 0.04 for phosphorus and 0.1 for oxygen. So the next step is going to be to divide by the smallest of these values. Uh, obviously, the smallest of these values is 0.04. So divide 0.04 into itself, you get 1. And into 0.1, you get 2.5. <clears throat> now, you've got to remember here that you cannot have 2.5. The empirical formula is the small, is the simplest whole number ratio of elements in a compound. <clears throat> the reason for that is we could not have PO 2.5. You cannot have 2.5 of an atom. So we have got to... can't do that, so we need to get rid of this. So in order to get this to a whole number ratio, we need to multiply that by 2. So we'll have 2 there, we'll have 5 there. So the empirical formula of the oxide is going to be P2O5. That's our empirical formula. Now the next thing we have to do is find out the molecular formula. Um, and to do that we need to know what the molar mass is and we're given that. So um, the way we do this is we do the molar mass divided by the empirical mass in order to kind of work out what ratio we've got these in in our actual compound. Um, so our molar mass, we're told, is 284. Oop, 284. Um, the empirical mass is going to be simply uh, 2 times 31 for the phosphorus added to 5 times 16 for the oxygen, which is uh, 147. So we divide those out and we get 2, which must mean that our molecular formula is going to be two times this. It's going to be P4O10. That is our molecular formula then. Okay, so that is, um, that's the first question done. Next one we're going to look at is um, to do with benzene. Now, the question tells us that benzene is a hydrocarbon, and uh, even if you know you, you have no idea what benzene is, just go by what we're told, and it's, we, we employ the same methods. Now, uh, we're told that uh, benzene has a molar mass of 78. We're told that 92.3% of its uh, contents are carbon. Now, using just some basic background chemistry, we know that hydrocarbons are made up of, surprise, surprise, hydrogen and carbons. Now, if 92.3% of that is of benzene is carbon, then the remaining percentage must be hydrogen. So if we've got 92.3% carbon, that must mean that we have got 7.7% hydrogen. Now, we need to convert that into um, a mass in order to deal with uh, empirical formula and things like that. So, if we look at it in terms of a mass of 100 grams, 
so out of 100 grams. So if this was in, if, if benzene, we had 100 grams of benzene, using these ratios, we'd have 92.3 grams of, ki of carbon and 7.7 .7 grams of hydrogen. Now you can see where I'm going with this now. So we're gonna do the mass divided by the relative atomic mass. Um, so that's gonna be 92.3 divided by um, carbon, which is 12.01 and 7.7 .7 grams divided by hydrogen, which is 1.01. .01. So if we do that, we get 7.67 and 7.62. Now you can see that those are more or less identical. So when we divide by the smallest, we're gonna get one and one. You know, technically this one is the smallest, but, but that's the ratio we've got, so one to one. So that must mean that the empirical formula of benzene is gonna be CH. That's our empirical formula. The simplest whole number ratio of elements that are in there. So we're gonna use the same uh, process now to figure out the um, molecular formula. So remember the molar mass divided by the empirical mass. That's what we're doing here. Um, so we're told that the molecular, uh, sorry, the, the molar mass is um, 78, it's gonna be 78, divided by the empirical mass, carbon is 12.01, hydrogen is 1.01, so we got 13.02. Um, so when you do that, you get six, when you divide those out. So in order to find the molecular formula then, we're gonna do six times CH, so we're gonna get C, six, H, six, is our molecular formula. Boom, easy.